In this video, we will be taking a look at proper dimensioning techniques for mechanical type drawings that we will be doing throughout this course. First off, we need to take a look at the different parts of dimensions. Now, the dimensions are notations that extend out beyond the part that help us determine how long different pieces of that part are. A dimension is actually made of four different components. First off, we have a 16th inch gap from our green line here to our actual part. And that little gap allows us to know where the part ends and this dimension begins. Now this green line extending out beyond that gap, that is actually called an extension line. It is extending this object line, the object line being part of whatever you're drawing. So we have that extension line. Then we have some lines with arrowheads on the end of it, those are actually called dimension lines. And there in the middle between those dimension lines we have the actual dimension. So we start out with this little gap. We have extension lines extending beyond our part. We have dimension lines extending beyond our extension lines. And we have our dimension between our dimension lines. So we're going to go through a few of the rules for dimensioning the type of drawings that we're going to be doing throughout this course. First off, dimension lines must be kept at least 3 eighths of an inch from the object and at least a quarter inch from each other. And this is for aesthetics and readability. You want to make sure this first line of dimensions is far enough away from the part that you can clearly read them and that they are not crowding the part. Additionally, the second tier of dimensions need to be a decent distance away but not so far that it looks weird. We want this to look aesthetically pleasing but we also want it to be easy to read. Now nobody's actually going to put a ruler on there and measure the distance that you are away from it. You can take a look at it and say yeah that, that looks pretty good or yeah, something looks a little goofy with that. Number two on machine drawings which are mechanical type drawings those are the drawings that we're doing in this course dimensions should be kept in decimal inches or millimeters if you're working in millimeters values are given to the second decimal place except where greater accuracy is required if you're doing a drawing that you need to go to the thousandths or ten thousandths um, you need to give that information for what we do in this class we are focusing on two decimal places. That is accurate enough. So as you can see here we have a dimension that is in decimal inches 2.50 and we have uh, two places after the decimal. Number three dimensions should be positioned clearly. If you have a case like this where we have a lot of dimensions sometimes the dimension lines will overlap on top of the actual dimensions what we need to do is modify those dimensions and pull some of those numbers out so again it is readable but it is also aesthetically pleasing and we'll show you how to do that once we start practicing putting these dimensions on so they need to be positioned clearly Number four, dimensions that are not needed should not be given. 
And again, this is for aesthetics and readability. We don't want a whole bunch of dimensions around here that we don't even need because it crowds the drawing and it makes it look not very good. So with this particular one, 6.50, I already have that measurement down here at the bottom. So I don't need to put that measurement again because I know that my measurement at the top should be the exact same as the measurement at the bottom. Number five, overall dimensioning should be placed outside of the smaller dimensions. So, for example, on this drawing here, our overall dimension of 6.50 inches is on the outside of these smaller dimensions. On this shape on the right here, our 4.04, .04, that is outside of this row of smaller dimensions. Now, when you do use the overall dimension, one of the smaller ones should be eliminated. So for this 6.50, we don't need to put all three of those smaller dimensions because we can do just a little bit of math to figure out the last one. So if we took out this two inches, we could just take 6.50 and subtract 2.50 and two and to get the last measurement. Now that is unless it is needed for a reference and in that case it should be put in brackets over here. So we have a overall dimension of 4.04 .04, and because there are so many little stair steps here it would take a significant amount of time to calculate this so it is faster to just put that last uh, little dimension in there and put that in some brackets um, and that will help the machinist or that will help uh, whoever is manufacturing this part. Number six, on a part with a circular end you should dimension to the center line. So we put our center mark in and we have a little gap there and we should dimension to the center line. So we would have to delete out that little piece of center line and go right to that center mark. And then the other end of that obviously is going to the top of the part. And that will help you place the circle. So we know that the center point of that circle is 1.50 inches down. Number seven, always give the diameter of a circle, not the radius. If you have a drawing and you have a full complete circle, you're always going to give a diameter measurement and you're going to use this symbol which looks like an O with a line through it. That stands for diameter. Anytime you have a full circle. Number eight, always give the radius of an arc with the abbreviation R, R standing for radius, given before the dimension. So here we are giving a dimension for this arc, which is not a complete circle. It's a small piece of a circle. Because it is not a full circle, we want to use a radius measurement. Number nine, don't place diameter dimensions in the shaded area. So if we have a part that has a shaded area, you don't want your dimension to be on top of that area because then it would be very difficult to read. And again, that is more for aesthetics and readability than anything else. Now. I don't know what the rest of this part looks like, but it may be better to actually do a diameter measurement coming off of the side of the circle rather than right on top of the circle. It, it all varies on what the rest of the part looks like. Even with this 45 degrees, we don't want that inside of here on top of this shaded area because it would be too hard to read. 
Number 10, do not use a center line or a part of an object as a dimension line. So on this particular one, we are using the center line as our dimension line. You don't want to do that. Right down here, we are using an object line as the dimension line. And we don't want to do that because it's not very clear. On this part, it even looks like part of our line is missing. The correct way to do that would be to pull those measurements outside of our part. So we have a little gap here, a little 16th inch gap. We've pulled that measurement outside of our part. It makes it much easier to read. This one down here, again, we are no longer using the object line. Instead, we've pulled that measurement down and we have our little gap there. We have our extension lines, our dimension lines, and our dimension. Our dimension is outside of our part. It makes it very easy to read and it looks very clean. Number 11, do not use an object line as an extension line. Now I'm going to jump back to number 10. This one was talking about using object lines as dimension lines. Now if you recall, a dimension line is the line with the arrowhead. Number 11, we're talking about not using the object line as an extension line. The extension lines were the little lines extending out beyond our object. So we have here this uh, arrowhead is pointing to an object line rather than an extension line. We would want to pull that dimension probably off to the left of our drawing and have this outside of the part and have an extension line on each side. Number 12, do not cross dimension lines because it doesn't look very good and it makes it difficult to read. So rather than putting this diameter of one inch crossing this dimension line, we would want to pull that up a little ways. Now as we progress with these future drawings, we're going to be able to utilize these rules for dimensioning and get a little bit of practice to help us uh, dimension these correctly and uh, make our drawings a little bit more complete than the previous ones that we've done.